everybody. We are back for another F2 podcast. It's great to have you guys listening, and we are excited to have Dennis Nutt, head coach of Washita State in Arkansas. Dennis, great to have you, man. Colin, it's great to be with you. So um, Dennis and I have a, uh, a, a pretty cool relationship. He and I met when uh, I was just finishing up my career at Coastal Carolina University, and he was coming in as an assistant. And uh, I remember, Dennis, I remember one of the things that you said that made me feel really good. You said you wish that you had, a, you wish that I had another year. And um, yeah, that man, that was so true. I saw you play a little bit of pickup ball there and uh, you're still coming back around and man, just getting to know you and just loved your personality and wish we had a little bit more time together. Yeah. And, and I, I that, um, I don't think, you know, um, you may not, I don't know if I've even shared that with you before, but that, uh, that statement that you had towards me made a big impact on me. And, and so uh, over the years, uh, we've developed a, a pretty cool relationship. Dennis came and spoke at our coaches clinic last year, and uh, we are the first hoping, annual. The first annual. That's right. That's yeah. right. <laughs> and so, uh, Dennis, if you would just to give a, a, our listeners a little bit of background, um, you played some pee wee basketball, and then somehow, somehow, you also played in the National Basketball Association. Is this correct? That is correct. That is correct. So please Colin, take, yeah, it all take, started, man. All started in Little Rock, Arkansas, and just grew up playing all the sports like like most kids. And uh, very fortunate to have three older brothers that uh, that I had to compete with on a daily basis. So that mm -hmm. uh, that was very beneficial to me. So I had to play up all the time. And uh, man, yeah. we were just you know, our dad. My dad was a coach, so we were always in a gym. We were always had access to a gym. And just kind of watching his teams and watching my brothers and just kind of following in their footsteps, it was it was kind of easy for me. But uh, yeah, man, it was uh, it was a good ride, and got lucky so, enough to get a scholarship to Texas Christian University, right? TCU, and uh, end up playing four years there, and you know, not knowing I could play at the next level, but definitely wanted to. Mm -hmm. uh, but man, I had, just went through a series of tryouts and. And then one day that, that dream came true and was able to make it on with the Mavericks, the Dallas Mavericks. And, man, it was a fun ride. Had a great seat every night. Didn't, didn't see a whole lot of the floor. <laughs> but, uh, but uh, man, it was fun. It was a fun ride. And, man, wouldn't change it for anything. Right. I love it. And so then uh, you get done with your playing career and you just jump right into coaching? Or did you try anything else? Or how'd that go? No, you know – being in my family, you know, I was uh, – all the brothers got into coaching when their careers ended. So, I, I, I just assumed I was probably going that direction, you know. Yeah. But it, it really – you know, I'm like most kids, you know, 26 years old, you know, still trying to figure it out. But uh, I knew eventually I would, I would end up there. So, finally, once the, uh, the ball went flat, so to speak, on my career, mm -hmm. I, uh, I said, man, I, I better get into this thing called coaching. That's, that's what I need to be doing. And, right. uh, and I started that journey. So, uh, yeah, I, I, you know, I guess with the family and, and the history of our family and just kind of watching those guys go through it before me, that was uh, – it was kind of laid out for me. Sure, sure. And so uh, in your coaching career now, you've coached all over the board, am I correct? You've coached um, the Division One. you've been head coach, you've been assistant. Um, yeah, I, I started out as a uh, grad assistant at Texas A&M and junior college in Arkansas and then assistant at D1, then head coach at Division One, and uh, scout in the NBA. So, yeah, I've, I've kind of covered the gamut of it. And uh, now back at a Division Two school in my home state of Arkansas, Washita Baptist University, and starting my ninth year, we, we start tomorrow. So it's, uh, yeah, it's been, a, been a crazy journey, but a fun one. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Now I got to ask you what, what all of those things that you've done in basketball, aside from playing when you've been on the coaching side of things or the scout side of things, what's been, what's been, what's made you come alive the most? Uh, you know, every, every stop, you know, every stop is, you know, is, is where you are at that moment. You know, it's, it's all, 
it's all, it's all been good to me. You know, it's, uh, it's all kind of a learning experience, kind of a journey. Um, you know, I thought ever stop, you know, played its part in my life, you know, whatever it was at that time. Yeah. Uh, but this, this stop, I guess here, the, the Washita stop, you know, I think this level, you're, you're kind of away from the, the spotlight and the media attention. So you kind of just get to relax and coach and, and have some, a little better relationship with the players. So that, that part has really been kind of satisfying for me. Yeah. That, and that's a beautiful specter, uh, perspective. And two things there. One that you said that at everything, every, everything that you've done, you've, you've managed to enjoy each part of it. And I think that's such an important perspective, especially for younger coaches. Um, so often we we're looking up the ladder and we're thinking, Oh, well, when I get that job, I'll be happy. Or if I can get the next thing, I'll be yeah. happy. And, and I think that's one of the things I appreciate about you so much is that you, uh, you really do live it up where you are. Like you really do enjoy and encourage and uh, you have a sense about life that I think lifts everybody up. And you've probably done that everywhere you've gone. Um, well, I, you know, I tried to, I appreciate that, Colin. You know, you never know what, uh, you know, what your words mean to, to kids. You know, I've had a lot of players come back, and, and, it's, and it's funny what they remember. You know, sometimes I don't even remember what I said to them, but, it, you know, some yeah. things stick with them. Uh, you know, I think we're, we all got a role to play, and, man, life is good, you know, and it, it goes by really fast. Once you look back on it, it, it can really get by you. Yeah. You know, especially young coaches with young families, you know, that, uh, you know, coaching can, can consume a lot of time. And it can consume your mind, you know. So it's it's a it's a balancing act. You you got to kind of take it in stride, and and so, man, you you got to try to enjoy it, man. If not, man, it's it's, it's going to beat you down. Right. So tell me more about that that the balance between um, you being a coach and traveling and scouting and doing all of that. While how many kids have you guys? Uh, uh, two. We have two, two twin girls. All right, twin girls. So obviously your wife is a full out gem because, uh, <laughs> because no question. Know, She's I, the MVP. She's the MVP, <laughs> no doubt. And so tell me, can you tell me about some of the times where it was, where it was more difficult on your family? Yeah. Well, you know, Colin, I'm, I'm only speaking from the college coaching perspective. You know, I, 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 I sure. always kind of went that route. I know I was never at the high school level and I know high school coaches, I talked to them a lot and, you know, there is a little bit more time for family, Yeah. you know, at that level. This level is a little different. You know, there's, uh, you know, it's, it's almost 24-7 sometimes. So right. you really have to work at it. You really have to work at, uh, you know, spending time with the family in, in those days off, you know, really trying to cut some time out for them. Yeah. You know, get to a soccer game or, you know, whatever you can do, coach their peewee team. You know, you, you got to work at it. Because yeah. if not, you know, you can you can sit in the office, you know, and break down film all day long. But, you know, I think it's, again, it's, you know, it may be who you're working for, you know, will play a big role in that. And, uh, but, man, it, it needs to be a little balance there. If not, man, it, it'll, it sure will beat you down. And how much has your wife, like, bought in? I mean, I'm, uh, how much has she played a role in, 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 in uh, and being a part of like your whole journey, right? I mean, I'm guessing it's just well, not you as yeah, a coach, it's, but it's, yeah, it, it it plays a huge part. And I was very fortunate. She she grew up in the military, okay. So she was used to moving every two years. So that that was never <laughs> a problem. And the other, the second half of that, she's a teacher. So, and I tell you, you talk about I, I talk about MVP. You know, she she interview every time she interviewed, she always got that job. Yeah. So. You know, just being able to to move with me, and and then to get the next job. You know, that's you know that's critical. Yeah. You know, in, in your family scheme of things, and trying to keep things going at the house, and you know, if if if, if mom's happy, you know, we're all happy. So right. She she did a great job in that, and you know, she never fought a move. She never uh, questioned a move. It was it was always okay. That's that's the plan. That's the next stop. And right. It was never like it was a it was a set out plan of attack. It was just you know it's just what presented itself to us at that time. Sure. And and we 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 made it. And you know it's it's been fun. We we we've, we've gone all over the country. And and again, every stop has been has been good. 
It's been yeah. good for us. Yeah. Well, and something that you said earlier about being at the Division Two level now, um, mm -hmm. you know, you, you've been, you know, a head coach at the Division One level. You've been an assistant at the at the Division One level, and you've been an NBA scout. Um, but there's something you said there was recently of of being out of the limelight a little bit and being able to develop these relationships with players, and there is a sense of um, a sense of uh, gosh, how do I say it? Like, like where you are, you're, you're, you're content and you're not yeah. aspiring for so much more. How about, how about, how, 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 how long did it take for you to figure out that that fit you? Uh, it, it was pretty quick, you know, well, first going back to this job, you know, I, I was after the scouting part, I was, I was out for a little bit. So I was, I was, anxious to get back in and and, yeah. and kind of do something with coaching. And, and I knew I wanted to coach again. So, uh, and when this job presented itself and uh, it didn't take long once I got here just to kind of get a little lay of the land, you know, what it was about. And, uh, and, it, and it's different, man. Right. It, it's totally different than division one. It's, it's certainly a little more laid back. You know, I think the players are more of the student athletes, you know, that they all understand that it, it's, it's probably not going to be a career after this. Right. And we have had a few that, that's gone on and play. But, you know, for the most part, I think they understand what this level is about. Yeah. And, you know, my brother spoke on it. He's a football on the football side. His first head coaching job was at Murray State. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was – and to listen to him talk about it, I, I understand what he was saying, how it's just away from the limelight. So you get a chance to – to grow as a coach, you know, without the pressure, without the social media hitting you all the time, it's just, it just allows you to be yourself more. Yeah. And, and again, you, you appreciate it, you know, get to a certain age, you, you appreciate that part of it. Cause you know, you still have that love for the game and it's, and it's, and I think your student athletes enjoy it more. Yeah. Okay. So talk to me real quick then about what it's like to have the limelight what it's like, what, what are those pressures that come along with all of the media and the newspapers, sure. and the, the questions like I, because I, be, I think a lot of young coaches see that and they're like, Oh, that's what I want. I want that. I want that. I want that. But I think a lot of us don't know what it is until we actually get yeah. in. It. So what yeah. Well, like? I was at a smaller division one. I was at, it was Southwest Texas state. And now it's Texas state. It changed okay. the name while I was there actually. Uh, so, it's it's let's say it's lower tier division one mm -hmm. so you but there's still that pressure you know there's this that that pressure of winning that that contract pressure yeah. you know everything is geared around and i and i say this sometimes you know contract coaching you know you do you do things you know you're trying to stay alive in that in yeah. that in that business so you know i i I was a young coach. I was a young coach and I made a ton of mistakes and, but you know, you learn from it. Uh, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't wish that type of pressure on, on these young coaches. It's, yeah. you know, I think if it presents itself, you know, you, it, you'll be ready, but uh, it's, it's a jungle out there, you know, with the social media, with everyone involved, like they are, the radio shows, uh, the Twitter, Snapchat, you, you name it, you know, yeah. everyone, everyone has your answers you know <laughs> everyone knows the formula on the outside but they don't know what's going on on the inside right so uh yeah it's uh it's it's a difficult it's a difficult battle you know the the higher major you know there's more pressure there but you know they have a lot of built-in wins you know they can buy the preseason non-conference wins you know right. so they're given a pretty good opportunity to have a good year, whereas the lower tier guys, well, they're the bottom feeders. You know, they're they're the ones that got to go up there and, and make the money. Yeah. So they have kind of a built-in losing formula right. until they get to their conference play. So, you know, there's a lot of dynamics in in Division One. There's different levels, and and all of them had their own sort of pressures. But uh, but man, it, it is what it is, and that's kind yeah. of what it's what it's gotten to these days with the social media. So so what do you think? Uh, a head coach now because the social media is is also it's getting to every level and certainly there's more um uh, it's a more heightened awareness around the bigger schools and the division one schools but 
what would you how how would you encourage a coach to stay focused on the things that you value of of building relationships and focused on the team and and blocking out the noise what have been the ways that you've done that in the past yeah uh you know the the, the best way is just you know the relationship with your guys you know is is closing the door you know after the tough losses you know they're going to be all the chatter all the talk all the negativity you know, I think that's where you just kind of, kind of close the door and just, yeah, my brother, my brother says this a lot, you know, back when he was at Arkansas, you know, after a bad loss, you know, he said, close the door and said, no one loves you now, but, but your mama and me, that's it. <laughs> you know, so you just try to, try to keep a tight bond and, and man, you just got to do your best to, to block out the distractions because, because uh, they'll be there. They'll, they'll throw daggers in a minute. Yeah. Yeah, and I can't imagine now. I mean, you and I grew up in a different area of playing ba- era of playing basketball, but yeah. I mean, these kids can get on their phone right after the game, and they're hearing all of the trash that everybody's spewing, you know, on Twitter, um, and that's uh, that can divide a team. But I would I would assume pretty quickly unless there's a a great yeah. bond in those relationships. Yeah, yeah, you know, it's sad in a lot of ways. You know, they just uh, but it's, it's, it's part of, it's part of the culture. You know, they, you're right. right. They, they're on the phone the second, second the game is over and see how many likes they can get or, right. you know, reading the, the negativity. So man, it's uh it, it is, it's a different animal these days. So uh, man, you just got to kind of stay balanced in your life and, and know what the main goal is in life and, and hopefully you're, you're sticking to it. Yeah, Absolutely. So along your journey, what have, who have been some of the most impactful coaches to you? What are, what are some of the books that you've read or resources, clinics that you could even recommend? Like, where have you learned all of your mojo in this game other than just playing and being around coaches? And give us some specifics, man. Well, number one, you know, it starts with my dad. You know, he was, uh, he was very fortunate. He played for two greats way back in the 50s. Adolph Rupp at Kentucky and Henry Ivey really? at State. Yeah, he played for both of them. And probably the only one that I can recall that, that played for both of them. And they were, uh, of course, legends back in their day. One was yeah. extremely fast-paced at Kentucky. Right. And then Iba was very, very slow, you know, defensive-minded. Right. And, and so now my dad preferred the fast pace, but that's just a different story. Right. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it starts with him, and I, I was kind of raised on that – the Arkansas School for the Deaf, their campus, I was kind of raised on, on going there and watching his games and watching how he interacts with the deaf kids and, you know, how he handled his business. So it was uh, – I was, I was blessed in that part. And then I had yeah. three older brothers, and I got to watch their careers. Two went in football and two of us went in basketball. So, you know, I had resources right there at my, my fingertips. Right. And I had the kind of the inside scoop on all of it. So – it started there for me. And then, of course, you know, the guys you worked for, the guys you played for, Dick Mata was, was, uh, was, a, was my coach in the NBA with the Dallas Mavericks. And, yeah. and he was totally different than my coach in college, Coach Jim Killingsworth. And I, both of them were great, you know, but they were totally different. And it's amazing what you find in coaching, how everyone will do it a little differently. Yeah. Not to say one guy's right and the other one's wrong either. It's just – it's just how each person will do it. And I think, Colin, you know, as, as you get on in life, you, you, you just kind of take what you like from this coach. You, you, you don't do what you dislike from the other coach. You know, you just kind of take all the experiences that you've had. And I was fortunate. I played uh, six years professional ball, you know, all over the world. I went to Spain and played for George Carl. And oh, wow. so I, I was fortunate to, to be around a lot of coaches. Uh, and of course, you know, my family, you know, that was, that was a big help. And, uh, and you just, you just kind of learn and little bits and pieces from every one of them. Yeah. Okay. So then, uh, how about, how about, uh, how about clinics or books? Like, are you, are you a reader? Are you a podcast? Yeah. You know what? I, uh, Pat Riley, the winner within is, is, is a really good book. That's, that kind of dates me a little bit, but <laughs> Coach K has got some good books out there. Of course, he's uh, he, he does a great job still. Right. And uh, 
but, you know, all the clinics, you know, the Final Fours is a, is a great time for young coaches to kind of get out and start building some relationships. And also, the you know, working camp. You know, yeah. if you're a young coach, you know, get to a, get to a couple of camps in the summer if you got some time to spare. And, and it's amazing how many coaches have done that and, and it parlayed into better, you know, jobs down the road. So that was so a networking piece. You'd encourage uh, coaches to go work a, a camp at a university. Yeah, absolutely. Somewhere. Yeah, absolutely. Because what they'll do, they'll, they'll they'll form those relationships with those assistant coaches. And then in time, those guys get head jobs. And that's, uh, you know, that's just how it works. You know, so you still got to, and I know we're in the age of uh, search firms and all that, but that's, there's still relationships out there that you have to make. Sure. Absolutely. And so, uh, yeah, I think the networking piece is really important. What, what's been your biggest, in, in terms of you getting new jobs and uh, connecting with people, what do you think has made the biggest difference for you as a coach? Um. Like where you I know mean, what? I know you're you are now now let's be honest you are a dynamic personality you have got you got a ton, <laughs> you got a ton of knowledge and and the game I think comes easy to you I think people come easy to you but what is it that you feel like you know what is it that is part of just who you are that you know maybe maybe do you think you've stuck to your guns do you think you've ever tried to be somebody else I think there's a lot of coaches that think yeah. they need to be a certain way. And I think there's something about you that has allowed you to progress in your career in a way that um, has, has suited you well. Well, you know, that's, that's debatable, Colin, because, you know, I think I should be at UCLA right now. But <laughs> no, I'll tell you what, it's uh, – hey, getting jobs, man, it's, it's tough. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's, it's difficult. I was very fortunate from the junior college to make my move to Division One. Because my brother, my brother was a head coach at Arkansas State, so I had a, I had a very, very close tie there to get me in. Right. But I tell you, man, getting a job is is difficult. And uh, when I got the Texas State head job, uh, the connection there was the athletic director was the head football coach at TCU back when I was playing there, Jim Wacker. Oh, wow. Yeah. So he coached to Minnesota. Then towards the end of his career, he. He got onto the athletic directing side of it, and, and he had to stop there at Texas State. So that's where he was at the time. And, you know, you never know what relationship, you know, will trigger a job down the road. You just never know. So, you know, I, I guess I give a lot of credit to mom. You know, she, you know, you, you just be, be who you are every day. You never yeah. know who you'll meet or who you'll see or, you know, that, that could impact your life many years down the road. So, yeah. So that you know, all I, I try to, you know, I'm not, I'm not, hey, we're, we're, we all have our, <laughs> we all have our off days, trust me. Sure. But, uh, you know, life, life is good. And, you know, I just try to live it one day at a time and, and try to have fun with it. No doubt. And, and so that old adage, it's not about what you know, it's, it's about who you know. Um, you know, it, it seems to impact, you know, in a way of us, of us, uh, you know, seeking out new jobs and, but it also, to me, what I heard too was the relationships that you develop, you never know who's going to be, you know, where they're going to move up to. And so the importance of treating people well and, um, yeah. and working hard and showing up all the time in a, in a consistent manner and being a professional, like you don't know who's going to see you in those times, right? And that's correct. That's and, correct. And, you know, for whatever, you know, everyone, by choices or circumstances or whatever, you're, you're at your situation. You know, you're there for a reason. You know, you're there. So you have to make the best of it, you know, day in and day out. You know, right. you, you try to serve your, your players or your, your staff, and you, you try to do the best you can. Because, uh, man, you never know. You never know. Life's uh, – Life takes some strange turns sometimes, and you just, yeah. man, you just, you got to be ready for it. You got to be ready for an opportunity. And, uh, but the bottom line is, man, it's, it's, it's the relationships and, and just doing your best to, to treat them right and, and, to, and to serve them when you can. Absolutely. Okay. So I'm going to put you on the spot as we, as we finish up here. Is mm -hmm. there, is there something that, um, that, 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 
drives you that you you are reminded of every day that you come back to to get centered of just like is there anything and i'm that like uh, maybe a maybe a quote that you live by or something that just says i'm just gonna make sure that i I stay in my lane here um is there is there something you like maybe a routine that you have yeah here colin here's what i do and you know i i I like the little jesus calling book that's out and you know has dates and every day there's a you know it's a good little quote in there and a little verse that kind of goes with it and for me that's always good kind of a quiet time yeah just kind of get the day started and that kind of gets me back to to reality a little bit sometimes yeah because uh we talked earlier you know how this job sometimes can consume you especially when you start when the season begins and you're 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 knee deep in it so yeah to me you know that's to me that's kind of the balance part my kids are grown now so yeah it's a little different that aspect of it so uh I kind of enjoy a little quiet time in the mornings and just to try to get the day started the right way. Right. right. I dig it. Well, for all of you that have been listening, we, uh, we appreciate you joining us. I know you've enjoyed Dennis Nutt because he's one of the most enjoyable uh, people that you can be around, as I'm sure you've heard. If you have not plugged into Washita Baptist, do it. They're going to do some awesome things this year, and I know that they're going to be coached well. Coach Nutt, I appreciate you being with us, man. Colin, I appreciate you, man. You're the best. And uh, look, bring your bring your golf clubs to Myrtle Beach next time. It's definitely going down. Oh, it's on. I can't wait. <laughs> All right, brother. We will talk soon. Have a good day, Colin. Thank you. Yeah, man. Take care.